Hey everyone, and welcome to day two of Halloween. If you're just tuning in, this whole week, right before Halloween, Monday through Friday, I am posting DIY videos that are Halloween themed, obviously. Yesterday, I showed you guys how to make shrunken heads out of apples, and today I'm gonna be showing you how to make a magic spell book. I think it's just a cool little prop for your Halloween decor, especially the stuff that I've showed you how to make in previous years, the candle holders and the magic ingredients and stuff like that. Or if you are a witch or something, you could carry it around with you or whatever. I have to say, I did go a little overboard with it because I cannot help myself when it comes to making books. I did a bunch of extra steps that I was originally not going to do because it's not needed, but I just couldn't help it, so I did it. And so I'm gonna show you guys how to do that stuff too. However, if it is a skippable, just design thing, then I'll let you guys know so you guys can just skip it. All right, let's get started. To make this spell book, you'll need the spell book pages printed out. I'll leave a link to the ones that I made down below. You don't have to use these, you can totally just make your own or use blank pages. Some colorful paper, a book press, I just used two pieces of wood and some clamps. Sea Lemon actually has a great tutorial on how to make your own press that I've been meaning to make myself, but haven't gotten around to it. I'll leave a link to that somewhere on the screen and down below. Tea, PVA glue, heavy duty thread, needles, some cording, tissue paper. Traditionally, bookbinders use Japanese tissue paper, which is super strong but I don't have any, so I just use some normal tissue paper, which is ridiculously fragile, so I don't really know why I bothered. A hammer, two colors of embroidery thread. Ideally, you want two that are totally different, like I'm using a cream color and purple. Thin ribbon, book board or mat board or something like that. Parchment or wax paper, leather or pleather. Four small clamps and a tiny bit of stuffing. Print out the spellbook pages. I organized them into their own signatures and tried to make it as easy as possible to print them out in order. And actually, just really quick, if you've never made a book before, books are typically made of groups of pages that are folded together and sewed together. Each group of pages is called a signature, and once you sew them together, the collection of signatures is called a text block. I just thought I should clarify that really quick because in a previous video, I was just throwing out these terms like everybody knew what I was talking about and I got at least one comment that was like, what the hell is a signature? So yeah. Anyway, you can print out as many or as few as you'd like. To print them out correctly, open a signature folder, open the front file, and print them out. Take those three pages and load them back into your printer just as they came out. Don't flip them or anything. Then open the back file and print that out. And it should now have both sides printed on these three pieces of paper. This is assuming that you have a printer like mine that feeds from the top of the stack of paper and flips the paper over as it's printing. I did a lot of trial and error and went through a lot of headache to finally figure out how to print the pages correctly so that they're in the correct order, even though that doesn't really matter because the font is gibberish and I didn't put any page numbers. But anyway, if your printer doesn't print like this, you may have to do a bit more trial and error to get it to print correctly. <sighs> anyway, go through and print each signature, making sure to keep them organized. Cut the pages in half. The way I organized the layout was so that you can fold the paper in half like this, cut on the fold, and the page will be aligned correctly. From here, I decided to do a quick tea stain on the pages. You could totally do this before cutting the pages in half. In fact, it would probably be easier to keep track of each signature this way. Anyway, this step is totally skippable, but if you want to do it, you'll need two cups of hot water, about eight baggies of tea, a shallow dish that will fit your paper, and a few towels. Brew the tea like normal and let it cool down, and then transfer this into the shallow dish. Remove the tea bags, squeezing out as much liquid as you can, dip your paper in, and soak it for about 5 minutes. You can alter how light or dark the dye is by either using more or less tea bags, or soaking the paper for more or less time. Originally, I was going to do one page at a time, or one signature at a time, but then my impatientness won, and I ended up throwing everything in, trusting my ability to separate the pages into the correct signatures later. Once soaked long enough, remove the pages and lay them out on towels to dry out. Be careful with this because depending on your paper, they could be extremely fragile at this point. 
I was just using normal printer paper and I ended up accidentally ripping a few pieces. I wanted it to look like a well-used book anyway, so I just worked with the torn pages, but if that's not what you're going for, then you'll need to be careful. Once everything is all dry, fold each signature in half. On the pages that were severely torn, I fixed them with clear tape and sometimes, if it wasn't over the writing, then I used washi tape. Now, I accidentally skipped this step and had to fix it when it was almost too late, but right now, take some of your colorful paper, I used black, cut two pieces that match your signatures, fold them in half, and add them to each end of the text block. Stack the signatures in order and stick them in a press with the folded edges sticking out slightly. Use a ruler to measure and mark the stitch points on the spine. I went one half inch in on each side, and then one inch in from those points, and then I did the midpoint. Extend the marks straight up and down, making sure to leave a mark on each signature. Remove it from the press and use a pin or a needle or something to poke holes at each mark. And now the fun part, sewing up the text block. You'll need to find a spot that you can stretch some cording. You wanna be able to stretch the cording up and down and have room for your text block to lay flat behind it. If you have a cord stretcher thing, then by all means use that. But I don't, so I had to get creative. I've seen people do this on bookshelves. They take the books out and then they stretch the cord from one shelf to the other and then place the book on the shelf and sew it up. But I also needed to get some good, well-lit footage. So I ended up moving a step stool on top of my desk and using that and it worked out pretty well. You need to stretch three lengths of cording to match up with the middle three marks on the text block. You want to do a cord for each mark on the inside. I used tape to secure the bottom cord, and then I decided to just throw in some screws at the top so I can get the cording a little bit tighter than if I had just used tape. Take the bottom signature and put it in place, lining it up with the cording. Now, for you guys, it will be the single colorful paper that I told you to add a few steps ago, but like I mentioned earlier, I totally forgot to do that right until the end of sewing it up. So just pretend that this one is the colorful paper. Take a needle that's threaded with some heavy duty thread and thread it through one end from the outside in. Leave a tail of about two or so inches and then thread the needle out of the next hole, making it come out on the other side of the cording. Loop around the cording and then thread back through the same hole. Repeat this for the other two corded stitches and then thread back out the last stitch. Place your next signature, which now should be the first one with text in it, and start sewing it in place, just like you did for the last signature. When you get to the other side, tie the thread together. Add the next signature, and again, repeat the steps like before, but when you get to the end of this one, go back and thread around the little bit of thread that's connecting the two previous signatures together like so. Then place your next signature, and then keep stitching, just like before. And here you can see me finally adding the ends after realizing that I accidentally skipped them. Tie the string at the end, and then you can remove the block from the cord stretcher or bookshelf or stool or whatever you ended up using. Bend the text block around to work the spine into a curve. If you have a cylindrical object, like a dowel or whatever, you can use that to help shape the spine too. Like here, I'm using a candle. Put your text block into your press with it sticking out about 1 8 of an inch and tighten it as much as you can. If you're using wood with clamps like me, clamp it so that you have easy access to the spine. Using a sweeping motion down and to the side like this, hammer the spine. You'll notice the individual curves of the folds of the individual signatures will start to flatten and it'll make the spine into a generally smooth curve. It also flares out the spine at the edges as well. When totally flattened, Spread the glue all over the spine. You can use a brush to do this, but I didn't want to bother having to clean one afterwards. Let it dry. Take it out of the press, and then you can add a head and a tail band. You can also totally skip this part if you want, but I just love how these look, so of course I added them. Cut two pieces of tissue and two pieces of cord that are thinner than the ones that you used for sewing up the spine. If you're really in a pinch for these, I've seen people just use really thin slivers of mat board, so that's an option too. Glue one end of the tissue onto each end of the spine. Line up the cord onto the tissue so that it's hanging over off the spine a little bit, and then fold the tissue back over and glue down, securing the cord in place. Take two pieces of embroidery thread, cut to about an arm's length, 
and then tie them together at the end. Thread each end onto its own needle. Thread one of the needles through the first signature, through the hole that's already there from when you sewed it up. Pull it up to the top and drape it over the side. Take the other needle that's coming out of the back and go up and over the cording and thread it under the cording through the tissue paper and then back over the top again. Hold it in place like so. Take the first piece of thread and pull it over and thread it through the tissue next to where you went through with the other thread under the cord like so. Pull this over the cording and hold it in place. Take the other thread, bring it over, and thread it under the cord again. You're going to keep repeating this over and over. After a few stitches, when you pull the thread over the cording, find the center of the signature that the thread is over, open the book, and thread it through this top stitch on the inside of the book like so. Close the book and pull back over, and then continue on like before. Doing this longer stitch every few stitches helps strengthen the headband and the spine. This is a pretty thin book, so I only did it twice. Normally when you pull a book out of a bookshelf, you tend to pull it out like so. This eventually wears on the spine, so people used to install head and tail bands to help strengthen those spots. Nowadays, they're mostly decorative, and you can buy headband strips that you just glue on, and it gives you the look that there's a sewn-in headband when there's really not. You could totally buy and use those instead for this project, or you can just leave this out altogether. When you reach the end, finish with the longer stitch through this last signature. Pull the other thread around like before, and then tie a knot. Trim the sides of the cording and add a little dab of glue on each end to keep everything in place. Glue the knots of the headband thread as well. Repeat these steps on the other side to make the tailband. All right, and finally, on to the next step. Cut a piece of tissue as wide as the spine and about one or two inches long and cut a long piece of ribbon. Don't bother trimming it to size yet, you can always do that later. Anyway, glue the ribbon to the top of the spine using the tissue to hold it in place. And now that I think about it, actually, this step should probably happen before the headband gets sewn in, but oh well, it's not that big of a deal, but I think that it would probably just look a little bit better. Cut two pieces of book board, or mat board, to be as wide as your text block, plus one eighth of an inch, and as tall as your text block, plus one fourth of an inch. On the cover boards, mark in about half an inch to one inch on one of the long sides, and then lay the cover on the text block, pulling the cording over. Make sure the board is aligned on the edges with one eighth of an inch hanging over, and then mark where each cord hits the mark that you just made. Repeat this on the other side. Cut holes out here that are as big as the cording. Thread the cording over the top and into the holes. Tug at the cords on the inside to get them tight. Lay the book board down, making sure the board is situated how you'd like with the edges hanging over slightly. Saturate the cords with glue and cover with some parchment or wax paper. Flip over and repeat, and then throw this book into the press while the glue dries. I left mine in for a few hours. Once dry, take it out, flip it open, trim the cords even, and use a needle to separate the ends of the cords like so. Glue them down, cover with parchment paper or wax paper, and repeat on the other cover. Let it dry in the book press again. I recommend still using parchment or wax paper on the outsides because the glue may still be a little bit sticky. If you want to make a raised or embossed sort of design for the cover, cut out your design out of mat board. I just remade the design from the front page. Once dry, remove from the press and glue the raised design down, or just move on to the next step to cover the book. Lay down some leather or pleather, wrong side up. Lay your book on top, mark one inch out from the three sides, and then roll the book over on its spine, and then measure out again. Cut this out. Apply the glue all over the cover, and if you're doing a raised design, make sure you really get the glue in all the crevices. Lay the book down on the leather or pleather, one inch in from the sides. If you're doing a raised design, Flip it over and start working the pleather or leather into the design. I'm using the other side of a paintbrush to really get in there. You may have to come back and rework it a bit as the glue is drying. Cover the back cover with glue and pull the fabric around and attach to the cover. You don't want this to be so tight that it's pulling the covers open, but you don't want it so loose that the spine ends up being droopy and that you can't see the design element of the cord poking out. Cut the corners of the fabric like so, making sure to cut about 1 8 of an inch away from the corner. Add a small dab of glue on each corner and flip that small section of fabric up and hold it in place with a small clamp. 
You can skip this step, but I think that it helps the edges look a bit more finished. Once dry, remove those clamps. There's a gap between the text block and the covers right here since the cover is only connected by the cording, so this lets you slip the fabric under the spine like so. Do this on both sides. And now just glue these tabs down. Insert a scrap of paper into the first signature to protect the rest of the text block. Apply glue all over this page and then close the cover onto it. Repeat this for the back. Throw this all into the book press one last time. For those of you who did raised designs, before you press it, take a small amount of fluff, place it evenly over the design. This should help push the fabric into the nooks and crannies of your design. Let that dry completely. And then, finally, you're done. Now, I understand that that was a lot of work. You could totally just print out the text that I provided and use this tutorial to make a book instead. It doesn't involve cording or curving the spine or making a raised design or doing headbands or anything like that. I just couldn't help myself when I started making this thing. I wanted to make a book that looked old and like it was traditionally made and yeah. So after it was done, I went through and added some little tabs with washi tape just to make it look like it's been used for a while. And maybe the book owner has bookmarked their favorite spells or something. I think these go so great with the magical ingredients that I showed you guys how to make last year. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, please leave a like. If you want to see more, then feel free to subscribe. Every day this week, Monday through Friday, I'm going to be posting a Halloween themed video. So stay tuned and tomorrow I'll be showing you how to make something else. Thank you to my patrons again for helping me produce Halloween this year. If you're interested in becoming a patron or you want to learn what Patreon is, I'll leave a link to mine right here and you can go check it out. You can follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Pinterest, or Snapchat, and I'll leave the information to those down below. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos or next year's Halloween, then leave a comment down below. Alright, I'll see you guys tomorrow.